Well, hello everyone. This is Expand Music with Noel Webb. I am Noel Webb. Uh, a series uh, of radio interviews with music supervisors and folks in the film sync industry, uh, S-Y-N-C, uh, all over the world. I know you're listening. There's quite a few of you listening and uh, people who are quite influential, which is great that uh, I'm able to uh, talk to you. So, you know, I, I sometimes I'm hearing trailers and some of the music supervisors are sending me trailers to uh, play on the uh, show, which we'll be doing in a bit. And it just really occurs to me after I listen to, I listen to them for a living, actually, how much we take this for granted, the emotional experience that we're given from these trailers. I was just listening to a trailer called Rust and Bone, kind of a moody blues feel uh, by Empire Design. And I'm hoping to have Will Quinney on in a minute to, to, to talk about that and many other aspects of being a music supervisor in London. Uh, looking for us. He, he should be on in just a minute. And um, and to talk about how musicians apply themselves to trailers and how, what it's like to work with a director. I mean, imagine being uh, with all the visuals of uh, a movie given to you by a studio, if we're talking about the theatrical trailer, uh, and maybe even the, the voice of Anthony Hopkins. And, and you're supposed to decide what was, is so important since the ni- late 1990s, how to market uh, a film, and in fact, a trailer, a movie trailer, a theatrical trailer can really make or break, of course, uh, an entire film. So, uh, you know, working like that is such a joy. And I, I, everybody I talk in the industry who's doing that and, you know, making money, is, if you're not, I don't know how happy you are, but making money and, and doing it for a living, that they're so, they're so, uh, they're always high energy and, and great folks doing that. And these trailer houses uh, work on both, um, Television, not both, but television trailers, and used to be what was the front end of DVDs when you would rent a DVD. There'd be four or five of these trailers in the front end of the DVD film you're about to watch. That doesn't happen so much with new DVDs gone now, but of course the big theatrical trailer uh, and so much. So uh, this is it's it's such a joy to have uh, this guy. Uh, coming on from a trailer house in London uh, that began years ago with uh, Toy Story and Train Spotting and uh, and Twelve Monkeys way back there, uh, Empire Design. We have Will Quinney on the line. Hey, Will. Hi there. How are you doing? Uh, well, very good. You sound like you're sort of in a booth at the. Is it the end of the day for you out there? Um. Well, kind of. Yeah, like 9 p.m. So, uh, yeah, getting there. Well, we're at the beginning of our day here, or in the middle of our day, all you know, high energy, and <laughs> you you've worked all day there. So, Will Quinney is a music supervisor, uh, maybe slash editor. He'll editor. He'll tell us in a minute for Empire Design, and I think there's some other configurations of companies that you're also working for out there. I'm, I'm guessing from the names I get. Uh, and uh, did you hear what I said about Rust and Bone earlier? Uh, I didn't know. I'm afraid. Oh, so I was introducing Will. Uh, the uh, the joy. Uh, I don't want to be too exuberant here, but the joy that we all uh, seem to take for granted with these trailers that are really incredible. I mean, 1970, 1950, when you watch something that was uh, visual and synced with music, uh, it would be kind of okay. You know, there it is. But now I was I listened to Rust and Bone, you know, which you sent me from Empire, and like this moody blues feel, and I got a whole emotional experience going on. And, uh, you know, this is what you guys deliver. Oh, cool. Well, thanks very much. Yeah, it's yeah. like obviously, uh, it's very kind of you to say. Yeah. So uh, you know, you know, when I just play this thing, I'm talking about so much. This is this is before we even talk more to you, but we want to you know hear what you have to say about stuff. Uh, this is Rust and Bone, a trailer. Uh, Will, did you work on it yourself? Um, yeah, I did. I uh, this this was a, a project that came into to Empire Design, where I'm I'm pretty much uh, in house and. Uh, I watched the movie and I was blown away by it. Um, I think the director is incredible and I, th- I think both the performances were brilliant. So I, I started really thinking about what would really kind of bring the, the, the kind of pure emotional drama out of the movie. And um, I, I did a quick pull of music and, and uh, sat down with the editor and, and, and I played him this song, which you're about to hear because there's, there's uh, hardly any dialogue in, in the trailer, if any, I think. Uh, and it just just seemed to work really nicely. The, the editor I worked with cut a fantastic um, uh, edit, and uh, everyone seemed pretty happy. 
I'm going to play it right here without talking much more, but it is interesting how the wide array of application that you have to do as a music supervisor and the editor accepting a director uh, to this feel that you're applied to this as opposed to elements and percussion and, and, and bangs and rises and so forth. But here is Rust and Bone, uh, Will, Will Quinney, Empire Design. It, 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 so, you like as much as I do. <laughs> well, well, yeah. I, I, this track is by um, M83, and it's called uh, "My Tears Are Becoming a Sea." Um, and I just felt like it had this sort of suitable, um, I guess, emotional impact that that you need for a film like that. Uh, I don't know if you've seen the movie itself, um, and it's also. It's it's a quite a normal example of how um, many of the foreign language film trailers that we work on here in the UK, um, our clients will often brief us in that, that we we kind of effectively had to have to uh, hide the fact it, it the film in this case is in French or or in Swedish or or you know um, Hungarian whatever language it happens to be in, just just to get um, as many people in to the cinema as possible. So uh, the music has to do uh, so much work, as does the editor, to, to try and cut a trailer just with, with you really using the visuals and without any dialogue from the movie, which is quite a challenge. Yeah. No, um, no, I can, so, and the music itself, that particular piece, also lends itself Strangely, I'm not sure exactly why I say this, but to a, a, an Eastern European or Russian uh, soulfulness that uh, if that's where, you know, if it's a foreign thing, what, that they can appreciate. Uh, yeah, maybe. I, I think um, the band are, are French themselves. Um, so it's quite a nice tie in with, with obviously the, uh, the director and cast of, of the film. Um, so, yeah, it, it definitely brings out some kind of soul in it and bizarrely well not, not bizarrely but but uh, uh a couple of people um have told me they actually cried when they when they saw the trailer which was uh, well, yeah absolutely, absolutely. sure that's the, that's yeah. the point that's why i brought it up right from the beginning the uh you know it's so striking that i'm seeing I'm hearing and seeing uh we can't see the the trailer and of course half of more than half i don't know how much a percentage of what will is doing is 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 visual uh, you know, art here with the music and the application of voices. But I, I'm struck by how many, uh, how much sound now is elements, sound elements. And uh, I think I was e emailing you this particular question and sound yeah. effects that are not harmonics, it's a song being harmonic, you know, a chord structure. And then it's just zim zang, you know, and really cool stuff, really cool. Uh, and is, is that the way things are going or am I just getting that today? 
Um, I, I, no, I do think there is a, a trend leaning towards that, particularly, I guess, in more sort of sci-fi action uh, type of movies. Um, I don't think so much in, for example, uh, maybe comedies or dramas where you, where you need, for example, this, where you need to get more emotion across. But um, I think it's the result of, uh, I think clients will often just want something that's got a bit more personality or um, character than, than a sort of a, your standard trailer, which just has maybe, you know, two or three uh, pieces of music in it and, and the normal kind of storyline arc. So it, it's more of a concept that, that they're after. And so, yeah, yeah you yeah. will often get editors will be using, you know, for example, the, the heartbeat or, or like a ticking clock kind of thing is, is the kind of classic sort of sound effect um styles narratives that can be cut for a trailer but um yeah no you're right it does seem to be something that's happening more and more yeah and and there's, there's a lot of younger uh, editors and folks you know involved and they they the more exciting that's just exciting sounds i mean metal sounds yeah. and so forth but you know where uh, there's an example here you use an only god forgives and when i hear what you did here in this particular too this particular trailer it's 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 the genius of it's just a simple thing man there's no big you know uh, musical genius here but the application of it i'm going to play Only God Forgives uh, trailer. This guitar, the choice of this incongruity, incongruity and discord music and walking down. Uh, only God, God Forgives a Will Quinney Empire design. Here it is. It's a minute and 26 seconds, so here we go. I know it's hard for you. You've lost your brother. I've lost my first son. It pains me to say this to you. It would pain any mother. If the tables were turned, your brother would have found your killer and brought me his head on a ladder. Did you get a guy that did it? It's a little more complicated than that, Mother. make those choices cool yeah thanks actually so that was probably my favorite one that I've, I've done in the uh, this year i think um yeah, it, it was some, just pleasure. before you can i want you to talk about there's something about huevos <laughs> if you know what i mean Is, you know an artist put stuff in it's like man this is where this is what goes and that's all there is to that boom yeah exactly yeah yeah it, it kind of is it's one of those um it's basically, it's an instrumental of a band uh, from Montreal called uh, Sons. And um, I saw them at uh, South by Southwest earlier this year. And um, I, I have to say, uh, in the last couple of years, uh, I listen to all kinds of music, but, but uh, in the last couple of years, uh, there's very little rock music that really kind of does much for me. And uh, very occasionally I come across a band and I just think, wow, there are they do, they're pretty cool, and, and I think you know their, their sound is actually doing something a, a little bit different, isn't it? and it would be really nice to hear that sort of thing on trailers. Um, so, so I just got hold of the instrumental, um, and uh, it just seemed to cut really nicely. Uh, it was also the, the fact that um, I listened to the score for the film, and I don't know if you're aware of the, the uh, director, Nicholas Winding Refn, uh, who did Drive. Uh, that soundtrack was particularly kind of iconic and w was quite a, a big seller on its own. Just to, he used a lot of, you know, uh, electronic artists um, from Chromatics to Kavinsky. I see. Uh, mm -hmm. 
Uh, Cliff Martinez also did the soundtrack to this, but it just didn't really work for the trailer, unfortunately, even though it was fantastic. So th this track, w w you know, had that kind of moody electro synth sound, but it was also really, really driving. And the, as you, you, you noted, the, uh, the kind of discordant guitars uh, bring some kind of quite, quite menacing filmic element to it. And so that, that really struck me. So, yeah, yeah. I, mean, I, I play jazz violin, and so the people I play with quite often in my bands uh, are stuck, and that's how actually how this particular show started a long time ago, was to expand music to get your, yourself out of your genre. And you, what you're now referring to is you know, playing music using colors so that you know, the, the guitar does this, the rock, and most rock bands and rock does this more than some of the other uh, styles, you know, country or hip-hop, because uh, rock has a it's wider array array in classical of course being the widest array of where you're willing to go uh and that's how i began the show so thank you for you know that's what trailers are, are doing so wonderfully so you are you do look for song um i'm going to say songs but uh do you do you use lyrics or how do you work with that or uh, do they have to be famous or what's that about um i it, it really depends on on the brief uh and really w what i come up with that day if i'm honest um you know, sometimes you, you'll have a trailer that needs, to, you know, we need to tell a story with a lot of dialogue and there's just no room for, for lyrics to come through. And if they do, you bring through one kind of small key line. Um, it, and, you know, you, you're really totally relying on the, uh, the instrumental, whereas others, um, as, as I mentioned before, you know, especially foreign language films, you really need the, the um, lyrics to do all the work for you. And I guess hunting those down, uh, I, I don't really think there's a, a particular method I have in any way. I, I just sometimes I'll, things will just come to my head and, and that'll be it, really. Mm. So, you know, for those composers who are out there listening, uh, we, we have to ask a couple of questions, if you would be stupid if I didn't, uh, about, you know, uh, submissions and searching. And do you go to websites like Source Audio or do you go out and search it all outside of folders that you have? Or is that just your thing, folders? Um, well, I mean, I'm sent uh, a, a lot of music, as you can imagine, uh, and I have uh, a, a big library that, that I'll um I'll always be tapping into previous playlists for other films. Um but but then you know often I'll reach out to, to people that, that I have relationships with um to do searches and um sometimes I just you know go online and look at some some of my favorite blogs or sites and just see what's what's going on. I just try and keep on top of uh, as many kind of releases as, as possible from as many genres as possible. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, so, whether it, yeah. I'm sorry. So do you ever listen to music to just enjoy it or do you always have to work and, and you always have that brain going of what's applicable, you know? Well, I, I kind of always have that on the sideline, but yeah, I totally, uh, I mean, I, as soon as I get up in the morning and, and I get on the train to work, I put my iPod on and I'll listen to, to stuff that's totally um, uh, on the majority not needed for traders whatsoever. Like my personal music taste is stuff like Jamaican dancehall and and um, a lot of music from from Africa, the Caribbean, Latin America, and, and I, I don't re really have much use for that in my day to day work. So yeah, mm -hmm. I do. Yeah. That's neat, man. It's really really neat to talk to you and to know. You know, music supervisor that I'm getting, we're all getting to hear from. The so, how did you get going with? How, when did you start in this? What was your growth to this place? Uh, well, I mean, I've always been a, a total music obsessive uh, ever since I was young, and uh, I also, in my teenage years, started getting really, really into film. And I studied film at university, and um, I, I fell into working at a production company in London, uh, do, working on commercials and uh, music videos. And then, then I got more into the music video side of things, and was representing directors and working with directors day to day. And really, we were kind of crafting um, visuals to go to music. And uh, when I fell into this line of work, it's, it's effectively the opposite. It's a similar thing, but it's the opposite. 
you're um, finding music to go with the with the visuals to to sell something. So um, it, it's uh, I guess it's that walking on the line of film and music that that is sort of my my bag, I guess. Mm. You know, I, I hope you smiled when I sent you uh, a question, which was that uh, for me, uh, trailers opened up for me and, and how important they were with uh, Carmina Burana, but O Fortuna. Right. But that's just, that's just me, you know, and then the Matrix Revolution, I think yeah, I sent yeah. you a list of it. So was there one or two that you went, wow, man, this is so heavy, and the movie's going to blow up with this stuff around it? Was there one trailer or music? Yeah, it was a good question because I've never really um, thought about that, to be honest. And uh, there's so many, you know, I've watched, uh, I'm sure like yourself, a ton of movies and a ton of trailers. And, you know, I, I never really remember them. But um, a couple that have particularly struck a chord with me, um, as a movie, uh, I'm a huge David Lynch fan. And um, when I first saw Wild at Heart, uh, I was just blown away by the soundtrack, uh, this sort of combination of Angelo Badalamenti's score, um, which was, a- along with, you know, speed metal and this kind of re- really sort of slow, woozy, big band jazz from the 40s uh, to Elvis tracks. It was just this kind of crazy mix-up of music that just sat so well in, in the film. That was really... I remember buying the soundtrack on a cassette and uh, I was just really treasured it. And then as trailers go, one that stuck in my mind when I was at university, uh, I remember going to the cinema with my friends and I can't remember what movie we saw, but, but the trailer that was shown was, was for train spotting. <laughs> and uh, that, that I, I, you might remember, had, had um, Lost for Life by Iggy Pop on it and, uh, you know... Um, it, it was it was pretty iconic in the UK. Here. It, was, it was a pretty iconic trailer, and, and so many people just ran to the cinema on the opening day mm-hmm. of that film. Well, uh, Empire did that, didn't they? Yeah, this was like way before my time. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and the the posters. I think that was one of their first first uh, jobs, actually. Is that your wife? Uh, yeah, she's in the other room. <laughs> no way! I'm just joking. Yeah, okay. Just... It actually. Was. <laughs> So yeah, can so, we talk so about Sarajevo at all, or uh, Sarajevo at all? Can we talk about that for a minute, or? Sure, yeah. Uh, so what you had said to me was, and this is very cool to hear as an example, that I'm going to. I hope I'm, I'm speaking not speaking out of turn. That this uh, P, this uh, trailer, uh, required a tune called Sarajevo, uh, and in and so in order to, and, but there, it was by by uh, I think it's, it's pronounced right or uh, Max, and um, it, there were no stems. Uh, with it, and so you had to, had to have the whole symphony do uh, the, it all over again, and, and it's a great, it's a great application that you did, and Prometheus, and uh, but it, it's the importance, therefore, of stems, uh, which I'm telling all my uh, composers. Uh, so I have music libraries, you know, uh, to constantly send me stems to uh, for you guys. So this is great to know. Um, yeah, this is this is kind of an odd one because it's not the normal kind of thing that we do we, we rarely uh, you know we'll be getting huge orchestras to, to create pieces for vast amounts of money specifically for a trailer more often than not um, our clients who are happy to, to go and spend the money licensing something pre-existing but for this one uh, we're working early days on, on the movie uh, on the campaign and um, I found this track by Max Richter and uh, it, it, everyone seemed to like it and it, it kind of felt like it had the, the necessary gravitas for a uh, for a Ridley Scott movie. Um, but, but yeah, some, someone at, um, at Fox had a slight issue, as you said, with the um, w- one of the vocals. They found it a little bit uh, high high uh, pitched, and um, w- we couldn't get hold of any st- uh, stems for it. They'd lost them. So um, someone at Fox decided, okay, well, well, let's get the uh, the, the orchestra that uh, composed the score for Prometheus in, and um, will will uh, essentially re-record the track. Um, and uh, Max was uh, we we had him uh, on his iPad, or literally oh, really? on an iPad. Um, he was he was in Berlin, but someone put, got him him up on the iPad and put him on a music stand so he could watch the uh, the orchestra uh, perform. So it was quite surreal, but uh, yeah, a lot of fun. 
Well, it's a, it's a dramatic uh, trailer all the way around, you know, the whole job you guys did. Um, you know, I, I have to move over to other kind of trailers that you sure. and Empire do, do and the, 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 uh, the design of these things, the approach must be dramatic for you. So this is a Breaking Bad, uh, Breaking Bad 30-second trailer TV situation, right. TV2. TV show, and yes. you can tell that the. And correct me if I'm wrong, Will. That you you're looking to get the information across of that of those people speaking. Uh, the whole application is entirely different. So let me play it for you first. This is Will Quinney, uh, Empire Design, Breaking Bad, 30 second uh, trailer. To WW, let me figure that is. Woodrow Wilson, Willy Wonka, Walter White. I'm scared. I'm scared of what? You. How many more people are gonna die because of us? No! Time to tell the truth. What are you gonna do to stop me? Say my name. Eisenberg. You're damn right. Breaking Bad, the final episode, premieres August 11th at 9, only on AMC. Yeah. So, you know, it, it almost seems a little, I don't want to say old school, but just, uh, just a different approach. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, you're right. It, it's it's pretty um it, it's a traditional kind of effective um sort of musically. You just want to get people excited and sort of feel tense in 30 seconds, as well as engaging with with the dialogue and the narrative of the trailer. So um, yeah, it, it's you know I, I think these these ones uh, you kind of it's less conceptual and more about straight to the point. Yeah. Yeah, well, of course, you know, uh, the actors and scenes and relationships in, a, in the movie you're about to see or advertising is one thing, but the actor you now have speaking on that, uh, that trailer is a heavy dude. Everyone wants to see what he has to say, so there you go, you know, right? Exactly, yeah, yeah. yeah. Sometimes it's yeah. just to, to, to not cloud it with, with music, so yeah. Hmm. So can you tell us, uh, we have uh, two minutes left or so, a little less actually, about working with uh, directors or what's, who stands behind you or behind the editor in that room right there? What, what happens there in that, with, that, with the powers of B? Okay, well, um, I mean, I, I've just finished doing, working on a soundtrack, uh, not, not just the trailer, even though I, I worked on the, uh, the trailer campaign, but I've just finished working on the soundtrack for Kick-Ass 2. Uh, which is out in in a couple next week, I think. Uh, and so in that, you're working really um, directly with the director and submitting tracks for each scene. Uh, it's very much um, the director has has an authoritative role uh, in that case. Whereas with trailers, um, uh, we're very much part of a chain, and we'll often get feedback via the marketing department at the uh, the, the Distributors or, or the production company uh, from the director, but but um, a lot of the time they're not too involved. Actually, um, I think a lot of the time they're kind of either too busy or uh, you know they, they let the distribution company and the marketing company um, get on with the job and, and get agencies to make the trailers. Um, but yeah, occasionally uh, you do get sort of some direct influence from the director, but they're certainly not. Uh, in the most case, sort of lurking behind the editor. Uh, I see. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I guess it does depend on the nice trailer trail. house and the, and the relationships, but, yeah. but I'm going to have to say goodbye, uh, Will. Will Quinney, this is very, very open and nice of you to be to talk so much in, in, about this. So this is Will Quinney from Empire Design, uh, and uh, I'm just going to say goodbye to you. This is a, a, a Expand Music with Noel Webb next week is... Uh, Avon Kebler from Paramount Studios. Uh, and, Will, thank you very, very much. Thanks so much for having me on. And take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So we listen, we watch the news, the tunes, the gaga, the report, the seaport, the speed song, clothes she wears. 
What clues can we shuffle through to keep from drowning too much, man? Nothing's gonna be new to you, but soon from behind on the latest lawsuit to cover all bases. Cause the New York Yankees make me, sank me. Coldplay tells me what to do. I'm thinking for yourself. But if they don't, they won't, they don't, they won't, they can't. You can't see where you're standing in the crowd, but you really can't see where you're walking in the world, baby. Walk, man, walk. See where you run by yourself, yourself. Can't see where you're standing in the crowd, but you really can't see where you're walking in the world, baby. 